You're listening to Kate Palmer from sparkletart.com. Today I'm going to show you how to use watercolour pencils to colour a stamped image. I'm using this stunning image from Sweet Pea Stamps and it's called Pumpkin Light and it's drawn by Ching Chow Kuik, who's one of my favourite artists that uh, is available on Sweet Pea Stamps. Now this is available as either a digi stamp or a rubber stamp and today I'm going to be using the digi stamp. I'm using Faber Castell Albrecht Duro watercolour pencils and I'm only going to be using a few colours. The first two I'm using are Light Flesh and Terracotta. Knowing that you're going to be adding water at a later point, you'll need to make sure that you stamp with a waterproof ink. I really like either Versamark for this or of course Memento is always a good choice. With this particular image, because it's a digi stamp, I've printed it using a laser printer and I've printed it onto Expressit Blending Cardstock, which is the same thing I use for my Kofi. To start out with, I'm using these like a regular pencil and I've added a very pale layer of the light flesh to everywhere that she has skin showing. I'm now using the terracotta pencil to add some darker areas that sort of hint at shadows, just so it looks like it's a little bit shaded. Now, I use these just as you would use your average pencil, but don't try and blend them at this point. That's what the water's for. I'm going to add in a little bit of the violet, um, just to give a bit more colour to the shadows. Uh, I find sometimes if you just use skin colours, it can look a little flat. So the same principles that you would apply to colouring with Copic markers apply here for your watercolour pencils. When using the watercolour pencils like this, doesn't matter what brand, it's extremely important not to press particularly hard with the pencil tip. The harder you press, the more difficult it will be to actually blend the pencil lines out. So if you use a light touch to apply the colour, you'll find that you get a much smoother end result. I like using a very fine tipped water brush for this. I also like to work with a piece of paper towel next to me, just in case the water brush gets a bit too wet. I like to start by blending the pale areas first, making sure that there's water on there, and then blending the darker into the pale colour. You get a little bit more control that way. Um, and then of course, if anything turns out too dark, it's a bit easier to take some of the colour off. If you start blending the darker colour first, you'll find it bleeds quite significantly like it has on this arm here. Just look at the difference. I put the same amount of colour down at the arm on the left, looks significantly darker and more purple than the arm on the right. You can take a little bit of that colour off by going over it with a clean water brush like I've just done there and just wiping it off on the paper towel. To achieve real depth to your colours when using watercolour pencils, you'll need to do more than one layer. So this first layer is just to get a base colour down. To achieve nice crisp colours, you'll need to let each layer dry before adding another. So that was the first way to use the watercolour pencils, applying them like a normal pencil and then adding water afterwards. You'll find that you get a beautiful smooth result, uh, but it is a little on the pale side, but that might be what you want for some projects. The second way that you can use the watercolour pencils is direct from the tip. So you would apply the colour with a water brush or a wet paint brush directly from the pencil. I'm going to use this technique to add a few more shadows to my image. You'll be able to see as I'm working here that the results are quite a lot darker than they are if you use it as a pencil. So you need to be quite careful when applying it this way. You can quite easily apply far too much colour. So having that paper towel there is vitally important to keep removing some of the colour so that you get an even coat. You'll notice that almost between every application I'll touch the water brush to the paper towel just so I'm getting the same amount of colour each time and I know what I'm getting. I'm now going to add some more of the light flesh colour while that terracotta is still wet so I get a beautiful blend between the two. And the last little bit I'm going to do on the skin is use my water brush as an eraser, sort of like a cleanup tool. So what you need to do is make sure that you've removed all of the colour from the water brush, and I'm doing that now. 
and then you can go back in and use it as either a blender to blend those colours together a little bit more or to go over like I am now and remove a little bit of that watercolour pencil from any areas where it's kind of snuck over the edge. It's much easier to do this while it's wet than it is when it's dry. Um, you can, If you can't remove some of the colours because some of them will be a bit strong, you can use the water brush to dilute them so that they're almost barely noticeable. And that's one of the great things about the uh, Faber-Castell watercolour pencils. You can kind of do that with those. I'm now going to work on some of the darker areas, which will be her dress and her hat. And I'm going to be using manganese, violet and black. And I love combining a secondary colour when I'm colouring blacks, just so it has a little bit more life to it. If you use just black, it can look a little bit grey and washed out. So what I'm doing is I'm going to be adding uh, straight black to the very darkest areas of her hat and her dress. And uh, I'll just show you that quite quickly now. Now the only thing you need to remember here is because you're using it as a pencil and this is the first layer, light touch. You need to use a light touch. You don't want to make any digging marks in the paper or press too hard. So light touch. Colour the rest of the area on the dress and the hat with the manganese violet. Now what I like to do is apply it a little bit more densely um, right next to the black so I'm using it as my sort of second darkest colour. You'll notice I do this on the bodice and the hat in particular. Um, this is just to remind me that that middle section or the left or the right depending on where your light is coming from should be a little bit lighter um, and that helps me do that. Grab the water brush and starting from the darkest area here because I want the dark to bleed into the light as opposed to the skin we don't really want the dark to take over on this black you want the dark you want the dark to take over so color dark to light um, if there are lighter sections like on the top of the hat you can still color the light area first and just drag some of that darker color into it and of course this is still just the first layer so if it's not dark enough you can always fix that later I'm just going to go ahead and apply some water to those areas and um, we'll continue from there. If any of those areas aren't dark enough, use the second technique that I've showed you, which is direct from the pencil. And using the water brush, just grab a little extra colour direct from the pencil and while that layer is still wet, add in a bit more of the black. That's what I'm doing here and it really deepens up that colour. So just by using those very two simple techniques with the watercolour pencil, you can see that the colour has quite a bit of depth already. The skin and the face has a bit of shading, so that it looks like it's rounded rather than flat. And just wait to see how this pops when I add the rest of the colour. I'm not really going to go into detail with the colouring of the pumpkin or the hair, as I'm using the same techniques that I've already shown you, so I'll just skip over this a bit. Now the last technique I'm going to show you is a way to get extremely pale colours if you want them. Um, so what I like to do is scribble my watercolour pencil on a piece of scrap paper and take the colour from there. In that way you can achieve a really pale sheer version of the colour um, without any risk at all to your project. If you're a little heavy handed or you just want a bit better control of how much colour you're laying down and this is the perfect way to do that. Um, I'm using it on the top of her bodice so that it looks like, you can still see the skin colour underneath but it looks like you've got lace perhaps or something like it over the top and I think this worked really well. Um, as you may expect you need to make sure that the colour underneath is completely dry or else these mingle and become quite muddy. I'm adding a little bit of the colouring that I'm using on the leaves of the pumpkin into the sort of accessories on my little witch. So I've got the green in her eyes and on her hat and around her throat. I'm colouring her hair um, with the same principles you would use for basically any uh, medium. So adding the darkest colour under her hat where the shadows are and just kind of blending it out. So again, you can use that water brush to blend the colours together and also use it to remove any of the colours if you'd like a lighter area that still coordinates with the rest. Now to create the background, I'm using Payne's Grey. This is a beautiful colour that kind of goes really well with almost any other colour. 
I'm applying it very lightly using the watercolour pencil, like a pencil, and you'll be able to see from the paleness of the lines I'm adding, I really am doing this very lightly. Now before starting on the background, you need to make sure that the areas of the witch that you've already coloured and the pumpkin are completely dry. If they're not, and you start to add water next to these wet areas, then you'll find that the colours bleed into each other and look really awful. I'm finishing off the background by adding a little bit of black to make it darker. I'm also adding some light yellow around the pumpkin to mimic the light that would be coming from within the pumpkin. Now with this light yellow, I'm also adding a little bit of that in on her hat and even her hair and her face, just to give sort of like a warm glow from the light coming from the little pumpkin staff. I go over that first layer with the water brush to blend the colours and you probably know what I'm going to say next, but if any of it's not dark enough, I then use the direct from the watercolour pencil technique, grab a little bit of extra colour on the tip of my water brush and darken up those areas. And that is my basic process for watercolour pencils. So I lay down the first layer, using it like a pencil, blend the colours, and then darken any of those areas that need a bit more oomph by using the colour direct from the pencil. I find that works really well for me um, and it lays down enough colour to make things look dramatic but still be well blended. So it is a process that I've used quite a few times and works quite consistently. So that's why I thought I'd share that one with you all um, because it makes these a bit easier to use. As a final touch, I'm adding in a little bit of the violet that I used at the beginning just to darken up some of those shadows. Now because I'm only using the one colour, I'm using water to blend out any lines. So what that means is I add the colour where I want it, I clean off my water brush on a piece of uh, paper towel, and then I just use the clean water brush just to sort of drag that colour across so you don't end up with that yucky line. Um, if I was to add just a line of that a purple or any other colour on the face and just leave it as a line, I would end up with that harsh watermark that you get. I'm sure you've all seen it. So I add the colour blend out with water and then pat dry with a paper towel just to remove a little bit of that liquid. You can see that yellow light from the pumpkin is now on the hat and a little bit on her hair. It just sort of ties the two things together. And one of the things I love about the watercolour pencils is that beautiful matte finish that you can see here. I love that you can layer them. I love that you can then use pencils over the top if you want to. I really do love my watercolour pencils. And this is what I've created with my image. Now I set myself a little challenge here. I had two beautiful ladies, Sarah and Denise, last year that I was speaking to uh, via email. And I mentioned that in Australia that it's really difficult to get Halloween supplies because we don't really have Halloween over here. Um, so buying Halloween craft supplies is quite difficult. Now both of these lovely, generous ladies, Sarah and Denise, thank you from the bottom of my heart, uh, sent me little gift bags full of little Halloween supplies that I can use in my craft and card making. So I was determined to use some of the supplies that they had sent me for this little Halloween card that I have created using the gorgeous sweet pea stamp from Ching Chow Kuik. So what I've got here is I believe Denise handmade this beautiful flower. It's got this wonderful purple gem in the middle here, a little bit of cat fur there from my cats. <laughs> and she's burnt the edges of the fabric so that it looks like this. Isn't that gorgeous? I love how she's finished this. So Denise has handmade these beautiful flowers and thank you so much for that. Um, I also had some of this gorgeous paper included here and a, a lovely little timber element with the word tricks. I've got some of these gorgeous, gorgeous feathers. Now I don't, I can't actually remember having using feathers on a project before so this might be my first feathery project and I'm surprised it survived because the minute my cats saw the feathers they went nuts. Um, I've used my Lindy Stamp Gang background that I've created back here and admittedly I've covered more of it up than I had originally planned because it was such a gorgeous background but um, I've used one of the ribbons down here that I was given as well and had the most gorgeous purple flecks in there so I felt I really needed to go here plus the little spiderweb um, diamante stick-ons here which were also adorable 
Now I finished it off with some black pearls. Um, I've just coloured her little uh, witch's hat here and then added a little bit of the yellow from the pumpkin which I've tried to make look like a light. So I really quite like the way this has turned out. It's really soft with the watercolours. It's um, sort of shadowy. It's sort of midnight-ish. Uh, I really like the way it turned out. And of course I've got the little green highlights here. I'm trying to work in some of those Halloween colours of green, purple and orange into this card. So this is my Halloween card uh, created with items that were generously given to me by some lovely ladies in the US. Thank you very much. Um, Denise and Sarah, I hope you like what I've done here. Thank you so very much for the generous gift that I've had a chance to use on this card. I hope you've learnt some useful watercolour pencil techniques from this clip. So have a wonderful Halloween for those who celebrate it and have a lovely month for everybody else. Bye. Thanks so much for watching and have a wonderful day. Bye.